Hi, Tessa. Hi, Ellen. <laughs> Thank you for joining me for our Meet the Artist interview series. Okay, so first question. How old were you when you started taking ballet and what prompted you to start? I was four when I started taking ballet and um, my sister was, is nine years older than me and she was taking ballet at the time. So I was at the studio all the time watching her dance and finally I hit the age where I could join in. So, so you were four, but at what point then did you decide you wanted to do this professionally? The passion was always there growing up, but I think um, I didn't really make the decision to fully commit to the career until about 17 when I really started to put things into perspective to see if like I could actually make it happen. So it was always a dream, but I think 17 was when it like turned real for me. So according to your bio, you studied in Warrington, England after receiving a scholarship through the Chiquetti International Competition. Yes. I am very curious about this Chiquetti competition. Okay, amazing. <laughs> so um, it's a massive worldwide competition that um, not so sure about right now, but it usually happens every four years. And um, the studio that I grew up dancing in, we are a part of the Chiquetti Council of America. So we have very strict guidelines and um, all of the testing and the syllabus feeds into the syllabus of the Chiquetti Council of America. So in order to apply for it um, in America, you have to have completed a certain grade level um, and if you've done that, then you've meet the qualifications to submit to be in this competition. So you perform, uh, you, you know, make a video, you have a classical variation that you do in a contemporary and they get submissions all over the U.S. and they narrow it down. Um, I don't know if there's a specific number, but I think that year that I competed, I think there was about um, between five and eight U.S. dancers. Um, and it's countries from all over the world. You have to make it past your regionals and then you make it to the finals. And um, my year, we uh, had our competition in Manchester, England. And they flew my mom and I out there. It was That's like, so cool. a, yeah, it was like a week long thing. You take class, um, you do your dances. And if you make it past that round, it's kind of like a round robin. And then, you know, you get high enough scores. So then you get to go into the next round and the next. And, um, and by the end, um, I had made it into the final finals and from there those dancers either get you know first second place they have a bunch of awards and the award that i had won was a year scholarship to a dance college in warrington england so that's so that was my winnings from the competition okay so you were already over there and warrington's not that far from manchester 30 minutes so this day so um, it was very daunting to uh, commit to moving to England um, at 18. Um, I felt like it was a little crazy, so I had asked if they would honor that scholarship for the following year, and they said yes. So um, I danced and worked for that whole year, saving up, knowing that I was going to be moving um, the following September for the school year. And it was awesome. So, and was it, um, like all dance all day or was there an academic component? All dance all day, no academics. So you'd wake up and you'd have your technique class, your point class, and then you would have in, so their RAD is very comparable to Chiquetti. Um, same kind of syllabus. Um, so you could, continue that syllabus in Spanish, in jazz, in tap, a um, bunch of other things. You could even get your teacher qualifications to teach those RAD classes. So there was a wide range of um, th things that you could, 
classes that you could take from there. None of, not all of them were mandatory. Like if you didn't tap, then you wouldn't take the tap class. Um, Spanish was mandatory though, um, which ironically I had been playing the castanets and grew up doing that. So when I got there, they were like, oh, surprise, you're going to have to learn the castanets and, and learn this. And I'm like, mm, that's weird. I already know. So this is the other thing I want to ask them. I know you also tap. Mm -hmm. Where does the tapping fit in with the chiquetti? Uh, tapping from a young age also. Were you tapping in England? So tap, I actually started taking tap before ballet. There was a young enough class that I could get into with tap. So I tapped for a full year before I could take ballet. Um, yeah, and I was just like a loud kid. I loved making a lot of noise and the rhythm and being able to make the sound with my feet was just like the best thing ever. So so I continued to take tap um, all the way through high school. So when I got to England, um, I could have continued with my tapping syllabus, um, but I think that was at the end of the day and an hour too many or something. So I didn't continue tapping in England. But you do tap now. I do. <laughs> Just those tap shoes off for sure. Neon has tapped into your tapping. Yes. Um, so part of a year and then visa. So back to the States. Yep. And then what? Right. So I had a taste of living away from home and dancing all the time. And I was like, I got to do this full time right now. And I knew that the opportunities were not there for me in Albuquerque, New Mexico. And so I tried to figure out what the next step would be. And um, as many young dancers do, they say, I need to move to New York City. Um, so I did. I packed my bags up, no job. I had a place to live with a cousin, um, but just moved out there and started working at Steps on Broadway and taking as many classes as possible and connections and um, probably about two months, yeah, probably about two months after I started working at Steps, a teacher had noticed that I was taking all of the classes mm -hmm. and asked me if I was looking for work, and I said yes, and um, so he got me an audition with Connecticut Ballet Company, and that's kind of where it, it took off. Mm -hmm. Cool. So Connecticut Ballet then to San Diego Ballet. Yes. To Smewin. Yes. Did you, so aside from your time at Steps, just taking class all the time, did you spend any time as a trainee, apprentice, second company member anywhere? Um, I, technically I spent my year at, in Connecticut as an apprentice. Um, so Was that essentially the same as being a full company member except for the pay? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> Yes. <laughs> I, I got to dance a lot, all of the class. Yeah, it was just the pay was different. <laughs> <laughs> you feel like you missed any sort of preparation, like going from just taking classes directly into that sort of full-fledged professional world? Yeah, I think if I could have gone, if I could have gone back and in my perfect world done in a different way. I definitely feel like I missed um, some really good vital years of being a trainee or an apprentice. Um, not that it didn't work out, because it did, um, but I definitely think that there's a really big gap between just being a student and not working your way up to what a company is really like. <laughs> Okay, so Chiquetti is like pretty classical ballet, mm -hmm. hardcore classical method. Mm -hmm. And now you're at Smeon Contemporary Ballet. Um, so what made you look for a company that has such a strong contemporary element? Okay, so backtrack years. Okay. Um, I had a small little piece of bone broken behind my Achilles tendon when I was 11 and they told me to stop doing point work. 
I could still do ballet and all the other things, but classical ballet and in point shoes was not an option for me. So though I loved ballet, I, sp I spent a lot of time being interested in contemporary and different movement um, and did, you know, uh, summer intensives that were San Francisco Conservatory of Dance, which is like ultra super contemporary, which was incredible. So there's always been a part of me that is just gravitated towards the contemporary side of things. Um, at age 16, I broke my right one. And um, so then I had to get surgery to take those little bones out, which is why at age 17, I committed to a ballet profession because that was really the first time that I could put point shoes on and dance and like explore that as an option so that that does that made me want to pursue that career but I had just spent so much time loving contemporary that honestly it was written in the stars for me to be a contemporary ballet dancer <laughs> so this is your fifth season now yep which is pretty crazy I can't believe it. I still feel like I'm, it's my first year. <laughs> <laughs> You're an old timer now. I know. It's so weird. Um, and obviously this season is a little different, but are there still things you're excited about? Yeah, absolutely. I mean, I mean, you're going to take, you know, not you, but <laughs> the world is going to take away our art form for six months. So already... I'm excited to just get back into a studio and moving like that feels like a win for me. But I think what I'm looking forward to the most is that um, the way that we've structured this year um, for now is that, you know, we have our individual groups and we're having the opportunity to create um, content on each other. And um, I don't think I ever really could have foreseen that I would be inspired to want to create. I think the idea of choreographing um, has always been a very daunting challenge that I would normally shy away from. Um, <laughs> so the fact that I'm like feeling inspired enough to want to step out of my comfort zone and create um, is a really cool challenge and opportunity that I don't know if I would, if I would have ever have this opportunity again to want to create. Um, but I think it's really cool that us dancers are getting to explore and have a lot of creativity um, options thrown our way, which is really cool because we're a very creative group of people. And I think that w the, a lot of challenges have been thrown our way. And I think one thing that dancers are really good at is accepting change and going with the flow and figuring it out. And so for all of us to be on that page and be like, you know what, here, this is, it's different, but we get to dance. So what can we do with it? How can we, how can we create and what can we do? So, uh, I think that's just the coolest thing for me right now is, is kind of the dancers get to open our creativity box and see where it goes. You choreograph, I think twice before for Etsmune for choreography showcases. Is that right? Yes. I think I, did a solo and then a group number. Yes. This past spring. Thank goodness we were able to do that. <laughs> yes, definitely. Just got that in there. Yep. <laughs> and squeezed in the little tap piece for Christmas Valley last year. Oh, that's right. Yes. Okay, so that's perfect. So mm -hmm. since you mentioned your tapping, you have tapped a quite a bit at Smeon. We've used it in Christmas Ballet in particular, um, as well as a couple of things in our Best of Smeon, I guess. Mm -hmm. um, but you've also been teaching tap for us in our online classes. Mm -hmm. How has that been? Because I feel like teaching tap over Zoom must be a really unique experience. Yeah. Um, first and foremost, it has been amazing. So <laughs> I have absolutely loved every second of it. Um, and I, I've actually never really taught a tap class in studio or not. So for my first experience to be on Zoom, maybe is kind of better because my expectations um, 
we're pretty much at nothing. <laughs> um, it's definitely challenging because, I mean, I'm a hands-on kind of teacher in general, um, and I love for everybody to be up to speed, understanding, feeling like they, they've they got it down, they're ready for the next thing. Like, I definitely feel like that's important to me. Um, and with Zoom, I can't hear the sounds and a lot of the camera angles are just upper body so I don't actually know what their feet are doing um, so that's different um, you know you kind of have to guess that okay we're all ready for the next thing or if there are any questions just taking a lot of opportunities to be like okay ask me all your questions are we getting it you know and um, my group is really good at being like we have got to slow down or yeah we feel great you know so the the verbal communication is there and they um they prompt me well it's just been incredible to see a group of of um, mostly women there have been some men throughout but um some of them it's their first time ever taking a tap class and to see them come back the next week and the following it's like it makes you feel like okay like we're engaged and they like this and we enjoy it um and it's kind of i definitely think that at the beginning of the pandemic it put the attention in my life somewhere else to be focused on other people to see okay i have this ability how can i pass it along and it it honestly helped me tremendously kind of just put the put my energy into something else and focus on how can i help somebody during this time as opposed to what you know <laughs> all the things i'm not doing right now <laughs> I feel like with the TAP group in particular, there is a sense of community, mm -hmm. but it's been interesting to see that that's possible over Zoom and for yeah. people who've never met in person, but that after all this time, there is still that feeling of like, oh, I'm going to go to class and see my <laughs> friends or whatever, even though it's <laughs> Yeah. Yeah. I think, um, I think I got really lucky with my little group. As I recall earlier this summer, I think you were in a commercial, mm -hmm. which is very fun. Yes. <laughs> and then did I see that you got, like you joined an acting union or something? Yeah. So um, it was incredibly random that I got this email to audition for this commercial. Um, casting director had my information and we're needing to cast dancers in San Francisco. Okay. So the casting agent reached out. I auditioned. Did not think I was gonna get it. It was a hilarious audition. Like, did you send a video or something? Um. So yes, yeah, so I had to send a video um, of just like frolicking down the sidewalk to no music. Like, just they just wanted to see if we could actually like, dance. And um, so then we made. I made the call back, which was via Zoom, uh, and I think it was everybody's first Zoom audition. Um, so you're in the waiting room, you're on the chat, and then you don't know when they're going to, you know, allow you into the room. And, you know, there's like 16 boxes and all of them are blank except one. And, and they prompt you and tell you what your goals are. And um, all the nerves are flying and you pretty much black out and you're not sure what you did, but hope that it was good enough. Um, so somehow it was good enough. And um, when they had booked me, they had asked if I had done some other um, SAG work, which I had done before, um, but had never bought into the Screen Actors Guild SAG because um, it was not something I was actively trying to get into. Um, but they had said because I had um, done too much or earned too much, I had to buy into SAG to be a member. So in order for me to, to film the commercial, I had to join, which is honestly a good little arm twist um, because the opportunity, unless you're actively seeking it, is kind of difficult to um, reach that specific quota to become a member. So it was kind of an open door. And so, and I really wanted to do the commercial. So I said, okay. 
I'll join. So now, yeah, Screen Actors Guild is basically the union for actors, singers, dancers that are doing commercial work. Um, and yeah. Cool. Yeah, now I'm a member. <laughs> <laughs> Do you have anything else lined up? Nope. <laughs> nope. <laughs> <laughs> all of the all of the stuff I've ever done has been like word of mouth so crazy how it comes about and I've never actively sought after a job the opportunities have just like popped up and presented themselves so okay so last question and you can choose to go sort of looking toward the past or toward the future here okay or both okay um, do you have a favorite ballet that you've danced or choreographer you've worked with mm. or a dream ballet to dance or dream choreographer to work with? Yeah. <sighs> this is a loaded question. Um, there is a part of me that because I went through the contemporary ballet route pretty quickly in, in my career, I have not had the opportunity to perform these most of the classical full-length ballets. So never done Giselle, Romeo and Juliet, Kalia, I mean, not, I've done Cinderella and Nutcracker. I think that's about it. So there is a <coughs> lot that I have not done. Um, so there is a part of me that, you know, would love to have those as a memory but I don't know if, if my passion is to stand in a line and be in Swan Lake, you know. So I do, I do feel like a part of me misses not having that. But looking forward, I don't think that that's something that my soul needs. Um, but if I were to want to do another ballet again that I have done, it 100% would have to be Indigo by Stanton Welsh. Um, and we did that my first season here. My first performance ever with the company was that. And that, to date, is the hardest ballet I've ever done. I feel like uh, you always, there's, for, for me, there's like, I could have done more. I could have done better. It could have been a little sharper. Like, not that I need to redeem myself, but I think that that's one of those challenging ballets that like, there is always technique to be improved and worked on. And there's something really satisfying about finishing that ballet. It's like, you feel really awesome making it all the way through. And yeah, yeah. it's terrifying and gorgeous. And Dawn, the woman who said it on us was incredible. I would, yeah. Stanton never got to watch it. So I think that would be a cool thing for him to get to see the company perform it. It's one of those ballets that you can't just turn on autopilot. Even though you've, you've performed it a bunch of times, you are actively thinking and counting. And yeah, it is so challenging, but yeah, in the most rewarding kind of way. It's a great ballet. Yeah. I enjoyed it. <laughs> I can see it again. <laughs> yeah. Oh, also though, if I'm throwing it out there, I, another on my bucket list of choreographers to work with would be um, Forsyth. 100 mm. percent and um and i would love to do some killian yeah i've gotten to do a little snippet of killian work killian's work fallen angels in a summer intensive and that was incredible so i think to like actually get to do it as a professional or something along the killian line would be great totally agree mm -hmm. um well that's it we're done thank you